of John F. Kennedy Jr. and his family. But tonight we're going to honor a really special person whom we all knew and loved. We loved his music. We loved his great sense of humor. We always enjoyed seeing him perform. And several of his former band members and friends are going to get together tonight and give you a wonderful tribute to him. And I'd like you to please think about him all through the show. And that, of course, is Mr. Charles Sautel. So, So please make welcome Pete Wernick, Tim O'Brien, and Nick Forster. Make uh, Pete Rowan welcome to the stage if you would.
Thanks, folks. <laughs> for this. Charles always had a blast playing at this festival. We have too. Glad to be back. I want to tell you the songs that we picked out tonight are, uh, that last one is one that Charles brought to the band. It's not exactly what people think of as standard bluegrass fair. He somehow thought that uh, Blind Willie Johnson should be included in bluegrass music. And that's, uh, that was just one of the many things that made Charles the wacky guy that he was. And uh, we started doing that song a long time ago. We, these are all songs that Charles loved to play or songs that Charles uh, brought to the band. And uh, we uh, miraculously, through the fact that, that uh, Charles gave Pete Rowan one of his prize guitars and uh, Pete is tuned into the Charles thing. This is really working. This music sounds good. Pete Rowan's doing great. Anyway, we, uh, we have a bunch of songs for you and uh, and uh, we've got Frank Edmondson back up there mixing sound for us, just like the old days. So, uh, here's one that, uh, one that Charles used to like to sing, it's called Don't Think of What You've Done.
In the, in the world of hot rice to play a million places and travel around all the time. <clears throat> One of the best stories we had about traveling uh, happened here at Winterhawk, and it's uh, vaguely connected to this next song. We played here one weekend, and uh, we hired a big fancy rock and roll bus to bring us up here because we were doing some other shows. And our bus broke down. Well, I don't know what happened to it. We were already up here. The air conditioning broke or something, so we called the guy and said, well, our, our air conditioning doesn't work. And so they sent us another bus up here. So we had two giant buses up the top of the hill. And then once that happened, then the rains <coughs> came. Big time. And, uh, and I'll tell you more about this story in a little while. Uh, here comes this next song. It's called You Don't Have to Move That Mountain. Please welcome Jerry Douglas.
So the uh, so the morning after our late night show, we had these two buses stranded in the mud, and uh, we woke up at about six o'clock, hoping we would make it to the airport by nine down in New York to catch our flight because we had a gig in Nashville that day. One of the surprises was we had Tony Rice asleep sitting up in our bus, which was the kind of magic that happens at Winterhawk. Just one of the you never know when that might happen. Might happen to one of you this evening. Hard to say. But uh, we managed to uh, commandeer some slightly nervous uh, patrons of the festival who were leaving in that uh, early morning and we got them to drive to New York City for their first time in their life <laughs> with uh, a bunch of our gear and, and we were a pretty sorry looking crew. We had mud up to our knees and we'd been schlepping all this stuff through the mud and the slop and we were really tired and stayed up all night. And. Uh, we managed somehow, we got both, well, somebody with the pickup and someone with a van, and it was just, this, again, the spirit of Winterhawk, these great people here, everybody willing to chip in. We get down, no, really, no fooling around. So we get down to the airport, miraculously, half an hour before our flight, check our bags at the curb, get into the airport, and get checked in, everything's set, we're all ready to go, and uh, Frank and Charles and I got on the plane, Tim and Pete were like spaced out looking at magazines and missed the flight. <laughs> and, then, and then the beauty of the story, which has to do with Charles, is that when we got to Chicago and we're waiting for these other guys to show up because they'd missed their plane, even though we'd done this Herculean, amazing effort to get, out, get off the muddy mountain and done this amazing, amazing thing to catch our plane. So we're in Chicago. And uh, Charles looked at me and I looked at him and we both, you know, we had, we were still covered with mud and straw and caked on mud all over our clothes. And Charles, uh, I was just kind of going with it at that point. And uh, Charles took out a $20 bill and went up to the shoe shine guy <laughs> and said, do what you can. <laughs> Blow through the meadow I go Past the mill with the moss 
were at the same correct height. If we switched from street shoes to the boots and one of us didn't do it, we'd always be fighting. Thank you very much. <laughs> same tempo, one, two,
several of our friends, including Charles, here on the grounds. It'll be growing every year as Winter Hog keeps going, and we've been coming back and seeing, watching it grow. And uh, also want to acknowledge a poem by Charles Barnes, dedicating the tree to our good friends. And uh, this is this is a little little number about uh, about this guitar. If this guitar could talk, I know it would tell stories of life on the road. Honky tonk bars, old pickup trucks. Get in tune and on with the show. This guitar belongs to Charlie Sawtell, one of the boys in the hot ride. He left it to me with Heather Round Tree and Jean to my wondering. Surprise. Hey Charlie, it's hard to let go. Tune up the fiddle on with the show. These rusty old strings make this the 18 ring, and we're keeping the show. C.F. Martin back in 1935 they got it just right Adirondack spruce top mahogany back and sides there's songs in the wood and there's tunes in the grain trees 200 years old ebony fingerboard and mother of pearl friendship more precious than gold Charlie it's hard to We're keeping the show on the road.
Charles used to sing a lot, and um, he was an inspiring guy all through his life, and especially in the last several years when he was going through his illness and stuff, it was just a, so often as the case that uh, being close to him and seeing him change and, and adapt and be brave and courageous and have a lot of dignity through all that, and uh, he learned a lot in the last years, and uh, he was a great example to us all. Anyway, this is a great song, kind of sums it all up.
So it's important to remember some of the wacky things Charles used to say, like, never turn anything all the way up. Uh, never eat anything blue. That was a big one. <laughs> anyway, we're going to do uh, another song. Um, this time uh, sung by a good friend of Charles. Charles, uh, Charles uh, you know, he endured lots of... Uh, indignities in his in, in his course of treatment it's a rough road to, to have the kind of disease that it has charles had it's a, it's a in a way almost a rougher road to get the treatment that they've got for it these days someday we might look back and think my god how do we make people go through this stuff but uh, the bone marrow transplant and all the treatment that he endured was tough stuff and uh he, he wound up at a hospital out in california that was kind of a specialized in this stuff he had and while he was out there uh he had some friends from california stop by david grisman Lori lewis uh, Harry Orloff uh, among them, and they got to spend a little time with him in the hospital, play a little music, and uh, I got out there for just a little bit. Anyway, here's a, here's a song that uh, me and Harry Orloff to sing, called I'm a Walking the Dog. There you go. Yeah, Charles used to always uh, remind us that uh, Webb Pierce had a uh, guitar in the shape of a swimming pool. <laughs> time for a few more songs. This is one uh, Charles was working on. Uh, he was working on his first solo record. Charles was not a prolific songwriter or tune writer or anything like that, but he obviously loved music, had a little studio at his house, and he was working very surreptitiously, secretly uh, on this project, a uh, solo record. He's got a bunch of his friends, including Dave Grisman, Peter Owen, Michael Doucet from Beau Soleil. Uh, he had uh, Flaco Jimenez and Vassar Clemens and Lori Lewis, a bunch of us playing on this new record that 
Lori Lewis is uh, working on putting together, and it should come out sometime, hopefully before the end of this year. And uh, this is, as far as I know, the only instrumental Charles ever made up, and it's one that he recorded, and it's going to be on his new, his new uh, record. <laughs> and uh, it's one we started doing just kind of the last few years. We started playing it live. It's one, again, you know, perfect Charles. It's one called the, the Butcher's Dog. And apparently the first title for it was The Butcher's Thumb, but that was a little too gross. <laughs> so he changed it to The Butcher's Dog. That's what Michael just said. Yeah, no, <laughs> Never knew that. Treat for me to come back. Okay, we'll do, we'll do that. Um, it's a treat for me to come back around here because I grew up in the Hudson River Valley and I got to see a bunch of my family today. Went over to Bash Bish Falls like I used to when I was a teenager. I took my uh, I took my 15 year old daughter out to Bash Bish Falls today and sort of vaguely described some of the things I used to do out there. Didn't go into great detail. Anyway, it's a pleasure being back among you all. Here's one that Tim made up. 
and uh, thank you again. This one could walk away the wind box. Some people might not know this, but uh, we don't know for sure actually what happened to Slade. We heard that he died the same day that Charles died, but you know, Slade is a mystery person. We're not exactly sure. 
But just in case anybody wants to remember Slade, there are Slade t-shirts and Slade stickers here for people to take home and the proceeds will go to some kind of something yet to be determined memorializing Charles, which we thought was pretty nice of Slade to do that for Charles. Anyway, go see about that if you'd like and uh, just can't let uh, this weekend go by without mentioning that uh, I'm really glad I'm here, especially this weekend. Ten years ago, I was in a really awful bad accident on the way here and uh, got through it. That was ten years ago. I'm still here. I hope you're all still here ten years from now, twenty years from now. And let's just remember those people like Al Plumple and all our good friends that have passed on and, uh, and uh, value our life for every day that we have. Just wanted to say that.
Thanks, Mary Dobb. Thank you, folks. See you soon. You can always hear Nick Forrester on his E-Town show on your favorite public...